Welcome back. We're not complaining, actually. We're just wondering out loud whether it's still worth it to be pursuing religious-based issues in secular South Africa of today. I wonder whether the ACDP will ever improve its position, uh, the Reverend Kenneth Mishra. But before we talk about that, let me get your response to the president's statement today where he says the response he gave the last time in parliament about 500,000 runs that allegedly went to his son, he made a mistake that actually that was a donation to himself from Bosasa. What did you think when you heard that and what is your response to what the president is telling the nation today? Obviously, like most South Africans, I was very disappointed. You know, when he answered that question in Parliament, he was very confident and almost convincing that what he was saying was the truth. Now, I'm sure he, I'm hesitating to use the word deliberately. I'm sure he, I'll use that word deliberately, misled Parliament. He knew that that money was given to him, but he pretended not to know. I'm sure there are people who advised him that the truth will finally come out. But before somebody uh, hangs your linen on the washing line, come out to yourself and say, I made a mistake. So it is a very serious mistake, if indeed it's a mistake, and it should be investigated. And when we have all the facts on the table, then we'll make our pronouncement there. But for now, we are saying, let what he said to Parliament be investigated to determine whether he deliberately misled Parliament or he made a mistake, as he claims. Okay, I nearly went on to ask about other things in Parliament. You know, you, you are a, a religious person, and one would expect that you are disciplined in your person in terms of your conduct. But I noticed that now and again in Parliament, you have a boxing match. Uh, you know, like it happened recently, bottles being thrown and people being chucked out of place. Have you ever taken part in such a melee yourself? Well, <laughs> I would never take part in such <laughs> or at least misconduct. Okay, you know? you've would, never, no, no, you've no. never been kicked out of parliament. No, uh, and, and I would never. You know, I, I believe young people out there are looking for leadership to emulate. So when we are in parliament, we have to take responsibility for our conduct, knowing that there are young people who are aspiring to be members of parliament in yeah, the future. Yeah. So when they are looking at how members of parliament behave. They should be saying, I want to live to that standard, rather than say, if that is how members of parliament are behaving, then forget about it. Well, that is what you can see physically when, mm -hmm. when, uh, when tempers flare up. But another thing which connects to the president's revelations or statement today is what is going on at the Zondo Commission, right? What we're hearing there. Are you as baffled as ordinary South Africans about the extent of wrongdoing, malfeasance, corruption, money exchanging hands and taxpayers' money is being abused? What, what do you think whenever you read and hear about this? No, story? we knew that there was corruption. We knew that there are a number of officials and also members of parliament to an extent who were involved in corruption. We knew that um, since the Gupta family came to the wedding and you know and they landed at the Air Force base, we knew that something was drastically wrong. Because when they came in there there was no immigration official. Nobody knows what was on that aircraft, nobody knows what they left in the country and what they took out. So when we saw that happen, and the president obviously claimed that he did not know about it, and unfortunately some innocent people, colonists, had been, were thrown under the bus, we knew that something was drastically wrong. But we did not know that it was but that you know, extent. That it, 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 there are so many names that are coming out, right? I had somebody suggest that maybe this thing must be cancelled and we let bygones be bygones and start on a new slate. Is it something that you'd entertain? Would you would go along not. with them? No, I would not. Yeah. I would not. People have to know that crime does not pay. People have to know that the law does not respect a person, that anybody, regardless of their social standard, if they make a mistake, a serious mistake or misconduct and they're involved in corruption, there must be consequences. We have a number of people yeah, today who are yeah, in crime, yeah. committing crimes because yeah. there are no consequences. But, but you know why they say that? Mm -mm. Uh, they say it because they say there's all talk, 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 but they've never heard of money being recovered or anybody being 
prosecuted. That is almost frustrating because it is true. Talk, talk, talk. And people are not paying back what they've stolen. We have to continue to hope that finally we'll have the head of the NDPP who will be above friends when it comes to matters of law, who will say, it does not matter whether you're my friend or not, you have broken the law, there must be punishment. Now, until we have such people who, are not, um, who have not sold their souls, for lack of a better word, to others or to higher powers, then we are not going to succeed in bringing people to book. But we cannot stop trying, we cannot stop fighting. Ultimately, we'll get leadership and we'll get prosecutors who will not fear men, but who will prosecute regardless of a person's self stating. Let's talk about the decision yesterday by the Constitutional Review Panel that said that it's going to recommend to, par to Parliament that Section 25 be amended so that uh, land expropriation without compensation can go ahead unhindered. It's been celebrated, of course, by the ANC and the EFF. I wonder what your position is. And you know, people have called your name saying, if you do not go along with this view, then it means you are a sellout. The, many of the people are saying those who don't go with that view are sellouts are deceivers. They themselves are deceivers. And what do I mean by that? They are talking about giving land to our people. But when you talk to them one-on-one -on -one and you read their documents, they are not talking about giving land to the people. They are talking about state ownership of land. And we are saying, ACDP says, land must be given to the people. And when you give land to a person, they must have as proof, tightly did, that the land belongs to them. But now, EFF, for example, even yesterday, in the committee, the leader of the EFF, Mr. Malema, said, all land must belong to the state. And we are saying, no, 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 no. The state can have their land, but individuals and companies and businesses, they must also have the land. And also to prove that the land is theirs, they must have title deeds. Now, we do not support the amendment of Section 25 because as it stands today, without the amendment, it allows expropriation of land. The only difference is it says with compensation, and the others are say without compensation. That's where the debate is. But the Constitution does allow expropriation of land. It is government's inefficiency that so far expropriation of land has not taken place. So people must not blame the Constitution. They must blame the inefficiency of government. All right, let's find something to blame you with. <laughs> Let's go for it. <laughs> okay, you've been very outspoken about sex education in the schools, right? And let's take a look at some of the comments that you made okay. at that particular time. Not given proper material. Maybe, for example, many of them, they come across child, uh, adult pornography, okay? They, are not, they, they see that. And obviously, children like to experiment. Now, Dr. Alfred Kinsey, on, on whose theories CSE was based, He's saying that children are born, all of us, we are born sexual, and that he encouraged that children must experiment, that information must be given to children, including anal and oral sex. Children as young as 10, I mean, parents out there, if they know that there is a possibility of 10-year-olds, 9-year-olds, 8-year-olds to be taught about oral sex or anal sex, I mean, that is not good for their age. So we are saying, what are you giving to the children? We want to see the content. That's why I'm saying parents must not just sit back. They okay. must know what their children are being taught. Well, what is your sense? Where do parents stand on that? Parents must wake up and take responsibility for their children. Parents must not complain that children are naughty, children are doing stuff that they don't know where they got it from. They must not complain when 10-year-olds are getting uh, pregnant and so on. They must not complain when... Primary school children are raping. Okay, Ch primary school children should get a sex education on their level. There are things that they should not hear. If you talk to parents, and you, you talk about parents who are maybe in their 40s and upwards, you talk to them and say, do you want your children to be taught or a sex, 10 year old? Do you want them to be taught? They will tell you no, that's not appropriate for their age. So that's what the ACDP says. But you know, not but, but here's a situation, uh, Dr. Muruti, that uh, children have got smartphones now and, uh, in, you know, in our society there's, uh, there's, trans there's openness mm. to uh, that children know about these things anyway. Mm. So the best approach would be to educate them about 
the pitfalls of sex, whatever form of sex that we may be talking about. Otherwise, they will find themselves in deeper trouble, and that is why some of them um, uh, fall pregnant or are, are impregnated at much uh, earlier ages than should be the case. Tim, you used a word that is not used by those who are propagating sex, a comprehensive sex education. Okay, sexuality education, sorry. You are talking about the pitfalls. They are not using the word pitfalls. They are just saying you are a sexual being. Enjoy yourself and there are options. If you don't like this style, go for this style. If you don't like this, go there. All right. They are not talking about pitfalls. They are not talking about avoid that if you don't want to be pregnant. If you want to complete your studies, do this. They don't do that. They are showing them the options that are there. As Dr. Kingsley said, they are saying you are a sexual being. We want to help you know how to enjoy yourself. And I say it is wrong for 10-year-olds to be told about enjoying sex. They must focus on their studies. Why are we having so many dropouts in our school? today why are we not producing so few scientists today we should be focusing our children well you say you say parents should be involved right mm -hmm. and I want to show you a clip in a moment maybe let's take a look at it and ask you a question on that because uh, many parents believe that the discipline of their children should be left to the authorities the schools and the teachers are saying we can't handle it yeah. ourselves let's yeah. take a look at this we are not in support of prisoners getting privileges that law-abiding citizens do not get. Um, <clears throat> prisoners have to lose some rights when they commit crimes so that they learn that crime does not pay. But on the other side, some prisoners do reform in prison. And when they are in prison, they wish that they could go out to a better society, a society that does not have the same conditions under which they committed the crimes. So in that case, we are sympathetic that they should be allowed to vote, although it is a tricky one. Well, those are some of the views that you have expressed in the case of the prisoners. I'll go back to that point in a moment. I just wanted to pick up on the amount of violence that we see on, uh, on school grounds. Um, children beating up teachers and uh, teachers retaliating, but generally teachers saying that they are fearful of children uh, that they need security because they are being threatened. We saw um, social media, some videos that have gone viral, water being poured over the face of a school teacher, another one being attacked by a student running around the school grounds, running away from, from this particular learner. And, and on the other hand, children say, I mean, parents saying, we cannot punish our children anymore because corporal punishment is outlawed. And teachers, on the other hand, saying, we don't have the tools to instill and maintain discipline in our schools. What, what do you think should be happening? Well, it is the fault of government. When uh, corporal punishment was abolished, we said to government, what alternative, what alternatives are you going to give to teachers? How are they going to control their children? And government was not forthcoming. Obviously, we know almost in everything there are extremes. In everything, almost, there are extremes. There are parents, obviously, who abused their children. I mean, to take a broomstick, beat your child, kick the child, I mean, that is not co correction, that mm. is abuse. We don't agree with that. But at the same time, we believe that government threw the baby with the bathwater. Rather than say, you can, if you discipline, you can only go this far. They abolished discipline altogether. And many parents' hands are tight. They don't know what to do. Because some of them, obviously, as you know, I'm a, I'm a religious leader, I'm a pastor. Some of them will say, how can we help our children? Because when I want to talk to my child strongly, when I want to punish him and say, you're going to be denied some privileges, my child says, you're abusing me. I'm going to tell the police. So it is the fault of government to remove corporal uh, correction without giving an appropriate, effective measure in order to control our children. It is disgrace. It is a disgrace to see a child chasing after his teacher, to see a child throw water at a teacher. This child wants knowledge. Say, she said to the yeah, teacher, yeah. give me the best you have. And you treat the teacher that way. But, I was but a teacher know, before. I would not give my best 
when I'm abused by my children. So many of our children are not uh, up to the standard when it comes to new But you know, you know, Dr. Murute, it, it seems to me, I'm, I'm listening to you and I'm thinking about other things that you, you raise, right? Yeah. That the, the nation, our society may have moved on much faster than the SA, ACDP, hey. I beg your pardon. Okay. Because I'm going to tell you the right. story of uh, Daha, marijuana, right? Oh. It's just been legalized. A lot of people are very happy about it and saying we're in step with the world and now world leaders have come to their senses to realize that people can benefit and even some medical scientists are suggesting the same that allow the people to use Daha after all. I mean alcohol is so available, freely available, taverns open until four o'clock in the morning, portal stores on Sunday. Why not legalize recreational use of Daha? Two things, Tim. Many times when um, we drive on the roads, we see the police stopping motorists to measure the amount of alcohol they have taken. Because there's a certain amount of alcohol in your blood that makes you not able to be as careful if you are a driver as you should be. But when it comes to Dakar, we don't have any such measures and such uh, checks and balances, all right? If take uh, members people members of the public want to take a taxi and they see a driver smoking a lot of duh i'm telling you as some companies already have fired some of their drivers for smoking duh because they know it does affect you doctors and scientists are not 100 percent in agreement about how Daha affects a person. So it is not fair to say those who disagree with the use of Daha are behind times. No, no, no. There is also scientific evidence that when a person is smoking Daha, it does affect your thinking. It does, it, some will say it depends how much you've taken. Agreed. But it does affect the person. So with alcohol, there are ways to measure how much alcohol you have taken, and you are told you cannot drive. But with Dakar, there are no sort of such measurements. We well, want people to measure. Let's talk to Ezram, who is joining us from Springs. Ezram? Hi, Tim. How are you? I'm good. Welcome. I'm good. Um, I'm an ACDP voter, all right? Um, and I simply vote for ACDP because um, I love the Lord. I'm a Christian, and I'm a law-abiding citizen. But um, my concern is that uh, a reverend is not consistent when it comes to that. Uh, he seems to be following every political party. When the EFF is fighting against uh, the ANC, he's there just as a follower. He's not leading any campaign. Um, he's not pushing yeah. um, um, uh, the, 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 the Christian values. Um, so, for example, if I can uh, give you an example, Helen Zeller at some point said something uh, racist, and um, they were busy fighting with Zuma at the time. And then when uh, Helen Zeller was taken to task to, to actually, um, 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 when, she, when she was taken to task, a reverend said that they are a um, Christian um, um, a party, therefore, the Bible says that when somebody has sinned, no matter how bad, you need to forgive. But yeah. when it came to Jacob Zuma, they were not willing to forgive. So and if I understand I, you, Ezra, I want him to respond. You are saying that somewhere, somehow within himself, he must find the capacity to forgive uh, former President Jacob Zuma. Is that what no, 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 no. I'm, I'm not a fan of Jacob Zuma. But what I'm saying is he has to be consistent. If he's okay. going to forgive one party, then he needs to forgive the other as well. Thank you. Yes. Thank him, you. Ruti? Well, I agree that when a person has uh, made a, a mistake and they apologize, they have to be forgiven. Um, but forgiveness also, <clears throat> depending on what that person has done, there has to be consequences. If you steal a billion dollars and you say, please forgive me for stealing, so you are forgiven, but you need to pay back. So saying you must pay back does not mean you're not forgiven. You are just paying the consequences of your actions. Okay. Consequences of one's actions should be separated from forgiveness. There is forgiveness. Once you have paid, it's over. Nobody's going to bother you again about what you have, the wrong that you have done.
Right, let's talk about the party's view and your views regarding uh, members of our society who sexually identify themselves differently from the norm or have got different uh, sexual orientation. Are you going out of your way to win support from the LGBTQ uh, community in South Africa? Anybody who supports our viewpoints, our values and principles is welcome to vote for us regardless of whether they come from the LGBT community or whatever religion, if anybody agrees and supports with our values, they are welcome to vote for us. What we do not do is to ask a person's viewpoint before they vote. We will not ask a voter what you believe. As long as they say, we agree with what you are saying, we support your and policies. And if they say endorse our programs? If they say we... Let's say they want ACDP to be represented, for instance, at the gay parade, would you...? At the gay parade? Yes. Now, when it comes to measures that are not in agreement with our values and our principles, we obviously will not violate our own values and principles. But when a person whose values we do not agree with is wronged, then we believe that their rights, um, maybe they are abused. Yeah. We will step in. We do not agree with abusing anybody. We have to. But discrimination accept. against people who have a different sexual orientation is it something that you support or you speak out against? You know, I, I do not agree with how the word discrimination is used. Okay. I favor chiefs, even though they're not doing very well. Okay. If in a place people are saying um, they talk bad about chiefs, it's their opinion. They are not discriminated against chiefs. It's their opinion. So if I do not agree with you, Prati, I like you, okay? You are a likable man, but there's something I don't agree with that you are doing. It doesn't mean that I, dis uh, I discriminate against you. I will still support you and work with you in areas we are common, areas where we agree. But where we don't agree, I'll tell you, well, here we don't agree. A very important point is, and I'm sure you're going to be asked questions a lot about it, and you'll have to clarify yourself. Okay. 2019 is just around the okay. corner. But Nelisa from Bloemfontein has got a very interesting question. It's got to do with the proliferation of churches and the misdemeanors yes. and crimes committed by some of the pastors out there. Nelisa, welcome. Uh, yes, no, I, I, I want to continue, to, to, to continue. Uh, yeah, ask the question. You so want to know about... Uh, the... What I am saying to you is that thing. We, I do not have a problem that we're educating our children with, about sexual things. However, what I have a problem with this thing is that when churches come, uh, when they come, you do not challenge Okay, thanks very much, Nelisa. She's, she's talking about the, the case, for okay. instance, of uh, Tim Omotosho that's now on in the Eastern Cape. And there are other uh, so-called charismatic churches, people drinking, maybe made to drink petrol, uh, being fed snakes, and cars being driven over them. And the church, or ACDP, is not saying anything about it. It is not fair to say not saying anything. Actually, I can forward to you the press statements I personally have made condemning such acts. I can tell you that I went to, you can ask the chairman of the Human Rights Commission, Advocate Moshwana. I went to see him about the abuse that is taking place among some churches, okay? And I said to him, I asked him the question. Um, actually, I went to him after I went to the police station to try and open a case. I went to a police station to open a case against a man that was making people drink petrol. Okay, I say, police, this is criminal. How can we stop this? And the police said to me, but the victims, so-called victims, are not willing to be witnesses in this whole thing. All right. So they said, no, we don't know how to handle this thing. Go to the... Let, 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 quick question. Let me interrupt I, you there. I'm sorry. I mean, what is your view regarding the case of uh, Pastor Omotosho? I'm not sure if I should call him Pastor, but he's there, appearing before the courts. Um, you're on Twitter. You must have seen some of the things I've said on Twitter. I have condemned and I will continue to condemn the acts and actions of people like Omotoso. I don't call him a pastor because he's an abuser, okay? So I wish that Omotoso would get such a sentence that all other 
people who call themselves pastors would learn from that. that one one word response, people. religiously based uh, organization or religion based organizations such as yours, you still believe they are relevant in this secular society that we are based on our constitution? In, in a democratic society, anybody's opinion is relevant. That's the basis. Okay. okay. Anybody's opinion, whether it's religious, secular, whatever, anybody's opinion is relevant. So I believe because there are people and there's a constituency I'm representing that my opinions and their opinions must be catered for in a democratic society. Uh, Re uh, Reverend Kenneth Mishra, thank you very much for having been our guest. We appreciate it. My pleasure, sir. Thank you very much for having me. Well, obviously, the Reverend will see it that way, that uh, his party is relevant. And of course, people go to church and there are people who agree with him. And we believe that we should hear all the voices anyway. And that's all we had for you tonight. And the news is next. I'm inviting you to join me tomorrow morning. We'll be talking about leadership for performance as well as ethical leadership. Two guests tomorrow morning on the Mudisa Network. From us, good night.